There are very few drivers in history that have shown dominance at one particular racetrack. Richard Petty at Daytona, Darrell Waltrip at Bristol, Dan Gurney on the road course at Riverside. They were dominant. Add Kevin Harvick at Phoenix. Bring her down. Kevin Harvick for the first time since Bristol is a winner. Back to back. Kevin Harvick sweeps at Phoenix. The long dry spell for Kevin Harvick comes to a close at Phoenix. Kevin Harvick dominates in the desert. He's won three of the last four here. Win, and he's in to compete for a championship. Checkered flag at Phoenix for Kevin Harvick. King of Phoenix, too, brother. I tell you that, was that four in a row now? And it's ninth the Phoenix. Oh, yeah. now, boy? History making right there. That's the kind of dominance I saw Jeff Gordon do, the kind of dominance I saw Jimmy <laughs> Johnson do, and there he is. And Kevin Harvick has tied Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt on NASCAR's all-time list of consecutive top 10 finishes at one racetrack with 18. You know, it's just a funny thing. Uh, you know, Kevin does so good. And he goes to Phoenix, it's just his kind of racetrack. There's everything comes together for him at Phoenix. So like everything comes together for me and Dale Earnhardt at the Wilkesboro, you know, 18 uh, top 10 finishes. So. You know, him doing 19 is, is quite a feat. It, it's, it's really tough to, to run 18, 19 races uh, and finish in the top 10, it, just to finish the race, period. And uh, to be able to do that, it's quite a feat. And like I said, it goes back, it takes everybody. The driver's got to do his job, but uh, the crew, the engine people, everybody's got to do their job also. It takes not only the driver's skill set and repeatability, but it also takes his crew chief and his team keeping pace with developments in the sport so that every time you go back there, you're as good or better compared to the competition than you have been. So it's not just a driver, it's the team. He's gonna thank his team and he should. Darrell Waltrip won, what, seven straight at Bristol because he had Junior Johnson's race cars. Dan Gurney had the Wood Brothers at Riverside. Richard Petty had Morris Petty and Dale Inman and those cars at Daytona. You know, Kevin Harvick in this era, he's got Rodney Childers and Stuart Haas. You know, we always say that we try as hard as we can every week, but you know, the reality of that is, is when you know you can go win somewhere, you always work a little bit harder, you try a little bit harder. And we know when we go to Phoenix that we need to have the very, very best car that we can take and, and the best equipment and, and do everything that we can do. And, you know, you want to go dominate at a place that you're really good at. And, you know, the team strives to be the best and, and we, we work really hard at going out there to Phoenix and, and being the best. And um, we, we kind of know going into it that we don't have to worry about whether the driver's going to be on it that weekend or not. He's, he's on it every weekend. and. We're just able to go out there and focus on what we need to make better and practice and, and uh, you know, get the job done. You know, you never think about streaks. Uh, quick as a, a race is over, you get ready for the next race. That kind of stuff is kind of a relative. You, you don't really think about it. We've got to get there, we've got to win the race. You know, Kevin's always been that type of driver that's really consistent, that can finish in the top 10 every week. And when you, when you put that on top of a racetrack that he's just, incredible at. It makes it a little bit easy in a way to, to be able to, to knock top tens out at a, at a place like that. So um, it doesn't surprise me by any means. Um, you know, I think all of us in the garage just see his consistency every week and what he's able to do and taking care of the car and not putting himself in bad positions and, and all those types of things. And for me, you know, I have to be proud of, of our team and, and everybody on it of building you know really good race cars and not having failures and DNFs and all those types of things and you know you kind of have to look at both sides of it of you know the, what the team's doing right and what he's doing right on on the racetrack and and uh, be proud of, of both situations. I think what makes Kevin dominant at Phoenix is just his background there and his history there of racing there his entire life. You know, once you win a race at a certain place, you kind of understand what your car needs to do. And for us as a team, when Kevin started driving the four car, we just hit it the first time out there and was able to dominate the race and win. I, I can't tell you what a thrill it is to drive a car like that four car today.
Kevin Harvick dominates in the desert. Great job. What a race car. Great job, man. Thank you very, very much. We were able to use that same setup for nine years straight of being able to go out there and be competitive and win a ton of races together. But the real key is just him knowing what the car needs to feel like and giving us the right feedback on how to adjust on it. And he also, you know, ends up running a different line than about anybody else and figures out where to, to place his tires in different places than, than everybody else. And, um, you know, part of that is just his history there of, of racing there for a long time. And, you know, I think it's just, you know, you have to learn of, you know, what it takes. And, and he's got that in the back of his mind of what exactly the car needs to feel like. And, and it just ends up giving us a huge advantage. If he's not the favorite going into Phoenix, he, Harvick is certainly one of them. He's now won three of the last six. Kevin Harvey, forever the Cactus King. He's the king of Phoenix, too, brother. I can tell you that, was that four in a row now? 